he's thinking, okay, this is getting really serious now. You know, that level is the, serious. The house is shaking. The house is shaking. And uh, so he goes, he grabs his backpack, he grabs a six-pack of Presidente. God bless this man. Right. But he left it. So oh. we have words later. He goes to put his key in the door, knowing that as soon as he opens that door, that's the direction the wind is coming. So he had it deadbolted. Oh. And knowing that, okay, once he opens it, free for all. But his life is more important than a house. Just as he's going to put the key in the lock, the now dark house becomes light. Because three quarters of the entire roof structure and walls vacated and he's, at wow. that second. So he's kind of in the kitchen and right by the door. So he ducks down. There's stuff flying everywhere. Paper and debris and leaves and, and, and all that. He has next to him his son, his adult college graduated son's football helmet, puts that on, grabs a backpack, heads out the door, leaves the beer. <laughs> you know, people. It's Come amazing on. we're telling this story. The humanity of it all. So he goes around the back of his house. Okay, so from the door, eight feet to the corner of the house. And then another 25 feet of house. He has to go, he has to duck under his roof and to get dark by there. At this point, too. No, it's daytime. So it's light, but not like daylight, daylight, because okay. it's a storm, <laughs> and uh, and it's raging storm. He gets to the little tree area between the two homes, makes it through there no problem, because it's a little calmer, because there's still trees and still leaves, and he gets next to a bedroom pod, meaning it's a standalone bedroom, and then a carport, a metal, you know, beamed carport covered with solar panels. Okay. And then a breezeway to the main villa house. He starts to enter the breezeway where all of the wind from Hurricane Irma is blowing. So it didn't work. Steve's a well-grounded human being. I'm just, you know, saying he's not tiny. It blew him every direction. He, he told me he was not really sure if his feet were touching. And so, I mean, literally, he's being blown around like a rag doll. So he goes back around the corner to that pod, that house. It's a concrete wall, probably a foot and a half thick. He crouches behind a very large ceramic pot, probably a three-foot tall pot. Crouches in the fetal position, knees down, and is there for two and a half hours. He can't. He tried again. He can't make it because of the wind howling through that area. And every few seconds, solar panels are flying off the carport to his right, just above him. So. so I imagine <laughs> he had a few nicks and stuff on his back. Little probably. scrapes and things like that, but nothing struck him. Um, wow. He, he eventually showed up, came down the steps, and came in, and it was kind of traumatic, but he came in and he's got one shoe on, a flip-flop, and, <laughs> and it's ripped, so he's kind of oh. like squeezing his toes together to hold it on. We're like, where's your other shoe? Man, that's the important question. Right. Not he's where's like, the beer. Uh, yeah. Well, that came later.